online. I am Benjamin. Today's video is about how to write an effective paragraph. English writing skills with spotlight on the paragraph. The paragraph is a very important section of every piece of writing and it forms the foundation. It provides the building blocks for good writing. So today our focus is on how to write an effective paragraph. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click also on the bell icon so that whenever a new video is uploaded on this channel, you will be instantly notified. Let's dive into the lesson without much ado. First, we look at the highlights. What is a paragraph? Why are paragraphs important? Types of paragraphs, parts of a paragraph, or the components, if you like, the basic structure of a paragraph, four essential ingredients of a good paragraph, how to write an effective paragraph. Let's look at this one by one. What is a paragraph? A paragraph is a collection of sentences which all relate to one main idea or topic. Of course, it is a distinct section of a piece of writing that usually discusses one main idea and it is indicated by a new line indentation or numbering. So a paragraph is a very important aspect of writing. Every good piece of writing consists of various paragraphs and today we are looking at the paragraph, one section, one distinct section of a piece of writing that is devoted to discussing one main idea, one central, uh, one related team, you know, one subtopic that discusses, you know, an aspect of the, of the thesis of the entire writer. So let's look at why paragraphs are important. Why are paragraphs important? Paragraphs help to separate the different ideas in a piece of writing. Every piece of writing is about a given topic which has different ideas or points to discuss. If you are talking about the effects of drug abuse, for example, you have different effects that need to be discussed. If you are talking about the causes of road accidents, then the various causes are different ideas that need to be discussed. And so each of the different ideas will have its own paragraph, all right? Paragraphs enable a writer to organize his or her thoughts, you know. If you write without paragraphs, your thoughts or ideas will not be organized. And it will be difficult to actually follow the writer's line of thought because paragraphs indicate a movement from one idea to another. Paragraphs help a writer to communicate his or her ideas with clarity by moving from one idea in one paragraph to another idea in the next paragraph. And in this way, paragraphs guide readers' understanding as they help readers to follow the writer's line of thought. So paragraphs are really important, all right? So let's move on and look at types of paragraphs, you know? Well, uh, in this case, we are looking at paragraphs as, you know, as if they were 
you know, distinct pieces of writing themselves, because you ought to know that when we talk about descriptive paragraphs, we find descriptive paragraphs in a descript in a descriptive essay. We find narrative paragraphs in a narrative essay. We find expository paragraphs in an expository essay, and so on and so forth. Today, our focus is on the paragraphs. But the last type here, which is literary paragraph, when you are, we are talking about write story writing or writing a novel and all that, you discover that it's a little bit different from uh, what we are talking about because today our focus is on the paragraph as it is in academic writing. We are looking at the rules, the, you know, the principles that guide paragraphing in a purely academic writing. You know, we are not talking about literary writing here because if you are writing a story, of course, you do not uh, necessarily follow the all that we are going to talk uh, say concerning the paragraph. You know, you organize your thoughts according to the narrative, uh, the the storyline, and all that. But today we are talking about academic writing such as when you are writing an article, when you are discussing a particular topic, you know. So that is exactly the, the context within which we are looking at paragraph in this video. Now, the basic structure of an effective paragraph. A, ba a basic paragraph structure usually consists of about five sentences the topic sentence, three supporting sentences, and a concluding sentence. Every paragraph in the body of an essay consists of three main parts. The topic sentence. The, the topic sentence contains the main idea of the paragraph. Then you have some supporting sentences, and then you have a concluding sentence, you know, that summarizes or concludes or emphasizes the topic sentence, all right? Four essential ingredients of a good paragraph. There are four essential elements that an effective paragraph should consistently contain. Number one, a topic sentence. This is the main idea of the paragraph. Number two is unity. A good paragraph should be unified. And this means that the entire paragraph should focus solely on one single idea, point, or argument that is being discussed. The supporting details should explain the main idea. The concluding sentence should end the paragraph with the same idea. In other words, the last sentence in the paragraph should emphasize the topic sentence or should at least be directly related to the main idea being discussed in the paragraph. The third ingredient of a good paragraph is coherence. Coherence. There must be a relationship between the ideas presented in a paragraph. The sentences should be logically connected. They shouldn't express isolated thoughts. So for your a paragraph to be coherent, all the sentences should be interrelated and they should all be saying things that, you know, discuss the central idea of a paragraph, which is the topic sentence. They should be related. They should not be disjointed, right? That is for it to be said to be coherent. Then the fourth one is adequate development. Every idea discussed in the paragraph is, is supposed to be adequately explained and supported with evidence and details that work together to prove the paragraph's controlling idea. 
you, you should be able to explain the points you are raising in a paragraph. Discuss it, give reasons why, you know, the idea or the points you are making in that paragraph should be believed by the reader. Why should the reader believe this point or this, this idea that you are projecting? And then you should be able to give certain examples, you know, to actually back up uh, or justify that particular idea. Now, how to write an effective paragraph? Number one, write the first sentence of the paragraph with an indentation. You know, leave about five spaces, at least from the, the left margin, you leave a space that is an indentation you leave a space if you are typing with uh, the keyboard of course you can press the uh, the area there is a paragraph key uh, you know button that you press then it leaves the uh, space and so you start you know, after the, that reasonable space that indicates a new paragraph. That is really very important. Then the second uh, step is open the paragraph with a topic sentence. This is option, however, because some writers may want to bring in the topic sentence probably towards the end of the, of the, of the paragraph. But uh, as a beginner or an intermediate learner, it's always good for you to know that starting the paragraph with the topic sentence will simplify the work for you because when you start with the topic sentence, then you will be able to, you know, uh, develop it easily. Now, let me give you an example of, you know, the two th steps we have discussed so far. That is uh, leaving an indentation and then beginning with a topic sentence. Let's look at it. Now you can see that this is actually um all right now rising incidence of road traffic accidents in nigeria this is an article all right and then you see this is paragraph one which is for introduction where today we are not looking at the introductory paragraph we are looking at the, the, the paragraphs within the body of the of the essay. Although these paragraphs uh, also help to uh, throw light on the central idea already indicated in the introductory paragraph. Now look at this paragraph two. You know, one of the most common causes of road accidents in this country is the deplorable state of our roads. You can see that this actually is the topic sentence. It tells us right away one of the causes of the rising incidence of road accidents. All right? It tells us, you know, uh, it tells us right away what the one of the cause of the most common causes. Now this is a topic sentence, and you can see what we mean by indentation. The space from here to here is what we mean by indentation. This space is the indentation, all right? So you leave a space and you can see the same space, you know. That makes the entire write-up look organized. It's broken into paragraphs. This is paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four. 
So each paragraph discusses a different point. And here, the, the, after stating the, the topic sentence, then let's look at other sentences and how they support the or back up the topic sentence. Now let's take this topic sentence one, once again. One of the most common causes of road accidents in this country is the deplorable state of our roads. Full stop. This has stated, you know, the topic sentence. Then continuing, the writer says, most of our roads are full of bombs and potholes such that speeding cars, buses, and trucks frequently run into them and somersault, killing or maiming the passengers on board. Now you can see, the, the, the topic sentence has told us that one of the causes of the road accidents is the deplorable state of our roads. That's the bad road, the fact that the roads are bad. And then the, 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 the next sentence is telling us, give, giving us a picture of what makes the road bad. That most of our roads are full of bombs and potholes, you know. These are aspects of the bad road. Such so that the speeding cars and buses uh, the speeding cars, buses, and trucks frequently run into them and somersault, killing or maiming the passengers on board. This has given us a clear reason why, you know, we should believe that bad roads actually cause accidents. Because this has given us example of the aspects of the bad road, the things that make the road bad, and how they actually contribute to road accidents. Then continuing, the next sentence gives us another example or instance, or gives us insight into other aspects of the things that make the road bad. It says, some of the roads are also too narrow to accommodate two vehicles going in opposite directions. You see, that's another aspect of the bad road. Then it says, consequently, there are frequently cases of vehicles getting involved in head-on collision with each other on these roads. So you, you can see, you know. So this has made the paragraph unified because the, the, the whole paragraph is talking about one point. And what is actually the, main, the, the one point that this uh, particular uh, paragraph is talking about what particular all right Okay, let's see. Let's uh, restore this, okay? <clears throat> so we can see this paragraph is talking about one point, and that one point is bad roads. That's all. Everything the paragraph is talking about is bad roads. That's talking about this particular paragraph. It's all about bad roads. That's what it's talking about. So that makes the paragraph unified because it is discussing one main idea. One. All right? So you can see that this is one main idea only one main idea and that is the idea that the roots are bad all right so it discusses one main idea then it contains a topic sentence and then it contains supporting details it gives examples and 
it gives reasons why the reader should believe that bad roads actually contribute to the rising incidence of road traffic accidents in Nigeria. So you can see how, you know, this paragraph is first of all unified. First, it contains a topic sentence. Secondly, it, is, it has unity. Then it has coherence in the sense that, you know, all the sentences are interconnected. They are all saying uh, different things that are related to the topic sentence. You know, one of the sentences talks about bombs and potholes that make the road bad. The other sentence talks about the fact that the roads are too narrow to accommodate two vehicles going in opposite direction. The other, the other sentence now tells us the consequence of the narrowness of the roads, that there are frequent cases of vehicles getting involved in head-on collision with each other on these roads, you know. So they are interrelated and that makes the paragraph coherent. Then number four, the, the, the paragraph is adequately developed. It has adequate development because it gives a, a sufficient examples. It gives us reason to believe that what the writer is saying is actually true. There is evidence given in the paragraph to back up the claim of the topic sentence. So this is exactly how to write an effective paragraph. Now let's get back to the third step. After the topic sentence, write at least three sentences to support uh, the claim or idea contained in the topic sentence. You know, there are no hard and fast rules as to how many sentences you must write. These are just suggestions, you know. Then number four, write one more sentence to conclude, summarize or emphasize the central message of the paragraph. Now, the most important thing here is to adequately develop the paragraph. And we have already explained what makes the paragraph adequately developed. And that is when you discuss the topic sentence, the idea you have raised in this topic sentence, and then you give reasons for the reader to believe that what you are, have just said is true. And then you cite examples to give uh, evidence, you know, justifying the point you have already raised, you know. So that is really very important. The number of sentences uh, do not really matter, but the important thing is to make sure you develop or discuss your idea fully. Then the step number five is to make sure you give at least two reasons why your reader should believe the point, idea or argument you have made in the topic sentence. This we have already uh, stated emphatically. Then the next point is that you have to make sure you give some examples to serve as evidence to justify your claims. Now, I've explained these points when we looked at the actual paragraph that we saw was fully developed, uh, was a unified paragraph, contained a topic sentence, gives examples, gives reasons to show that the point raised is a valid point. All right? So, we have really uh, been able to look at how to write an effective paragraph. I want to believe that you have gained quite a lot from this particular video. We have looked at what a paragraph is, what, why paragraphs are important, types of paragraphs, parts of a paragraph or the basic structure of a paragraph. We have looked at these. We, are, we have also looked at four essential ingredients of a good paragraph. It has to contain 
a topic sentence, it has to have unity. It should be a unified paragraph. Then it should have coherent. The various sentences should be interrelated and they all, even though raising different points, should, you know, make these points aspects of the topic sentence, all right? Then we also looked at how to write an effective paragraph. So I, be, I want to believe that you have gained quite a lot from today's video. If you enjoyed the video, like it and share it with your friends and relations. If you have not subscribed to the channel, kindly do so. And remember to click on the bell icon so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly notified. This is where we draw the curtain in today's video. See you in the next video and remain blessed.